Hello and welcome back to another very quick one uh, at Take Refuge TV. Um, thanks for all the new subscribers. I'll continue making content, although I will be taking a little uh, break away over the next couple of weeks. So um, it might be light on the ground for a couple of weeks, if at all. Now, um, I just want to make this quick tutorial, this quick little sort of uh, explanation even. Um, as I've had a, a couple of comments on, on here and, and also on Reddit and stuff saying why should I pay for plasticity when I can get Blender for free? And the reason is is that the two softwares do um, very different things. So I'm just going to do a really quick example in both Blender and uh, plasticity of doing the same thing in both softwares essentially and then showing where you can take it from from there in each one so we'll get cracking so what i'm going to do in blender i'm going to go into front view by pressing one on the numpad um, and i'm going to go shift a and add a cube okay so i've got my cube i'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab so i'm going to press m on the keyboard and merge at center so my i've got a single vert at the origin point now i've got snapping enabled okay so I'm just going to extrude this out, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna keep extruding and I'm gonna make a shape. See if you can guess what it is. And as we go along, I'm making this um, shape. I'm gonna eventually convert it to a curve and you'll see what it is. Uh, some of you people who've done this before may already know. And let's go in a bit. And let's just extrude this up on the Z and another diagonal, another up, and I might just G that one back, uh, extrude it down. Uh, I want to extrude that one out and let's give it a little shape at the top. Okay, so now we've got this shape. I'm going to go. Uh, control B and press V to bevel it on the curve a little bit and I'm just going to add an extra uh, couple of cuts there so we've got something more in line with what plasticity now this is all polygons for now and we've got this shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a modifier and it's going to be a screw modifier okay and as you can see straight away we've got this but it's not too great looking. I might turn off um, cavity. Okay, so it's not amazing looking. So what we'll do is we'll take off the modifier and I've got this set to my um, uh, shortcuts. We're in object mode, so I'm pressing Q and this is where I've set up all my quick favorites. Very similar to what you can do in um, plasticity and I'm going to convert this to a curve so now we should be able to open this up and it should be a busier curve now let's add our screw modifier and see what happens and it's probably going to be on the wrong axis no nope, it's on the, so we've got a much smoother and what we've basically got here is a water fountain just adding a quick tip in here for blender I know that I showed you um, using uh, the method of uh, extruding geometry and converting it to a curve but just a quick one if you um, shift a um, and add a curve not a mesh a curve and take it up and just add a bezier go into um, edit mode and just delete everything okay and then if we add the screw modifier um, and then make sure you're in draw mode you can actually just draw something and make a vase or something like that. So it's very similar to the revolve function in um, uh, plasticity. So it's not going to be perfect, but if you're trying to make uh, pottery and stuff like that, really great stuff here. So um, just a quick tip for Blender. Some of you probably already knew that. All right. Back. Back to the tutorial. You can screw it in different directions. Um, and let's just change the steps. 
to 100 and like maybe 150. Okay, and if we look at our wireframe, we've got quite a lot of geometry there. But let's um, let's go and convert that back to a mesh. Uh, so now we've got a mesh that looks a lot like that. Um, there might be some holes. Don't know if there is or not. Okay, so now we could do the same thing in plasticity. So I'm just going to go across to plasticity and I've already got one here in plasticity um, that I that I tried out. So let's delete all of everything in here. Okay, and let's take this curve here. Okay, and let's just bring it across. Uh, I might snap to grid as well because then we're matching what we had in Blender and let's just pull the grid out so we've got uh, a similar amount of grid points. So I'm just going to pull this up very roughly. It's not going to be identical to the one in Blender obviously because I'm just doing an example. If I wanted it to be identical I would bring in a uh, drawing. Okay so great thing about plasticity is that it tells you if uh, something's parallel or not. So um, we'll bring this one up a bit. We'll give this another curve like that and bring a little bauble at the top as well and let's uh, take this number one into um, point mode select all the points and bevel them just like we did in blender okay and then we'll go back into two into edge mode select revolve Select the origin, so just hover around here until you get the origin and pull it down. And now we've got um, something similar. So let's take off edges, show edges, and let's take off the viewport. Let's look at that and then let's look at what we've got in Blender. Okay. So. And let's uh, turn off our overlays and plasticity blender so we got slightly different shapes obviously because I was freestyling just going between these two now this is where I come to the point on my video you can do the same thing in blender that you can do in plasticity but where you take it from there is what software you would choose so let's in blender what might we do with a um uh, a fountain like this we might want to add details to it so we take it into sculpting mode um we go control uh we'll, we'll take it back into sculpt mode and we go control r and remesh it actually let's uh change the remesh modifier to something more like 0.05 um, is it shift out? Oh, I can't remember. Shift. I use ZBrush mostly. Okay, and then you might want to start adding details. Um, I haven't got my um, I haven't got it on my monitor, so we might. You're just going to have to excuse me. I usually use ZBrush for sculpting, and I believe it's F. And you might want to start flattening out areas um, or adding. Um, details, uh, creasing things, so you press alt and you can, I think this needs a lot more detail actually, so we'll go 0 0.01, remesh, that's thinking about it, okay yeah, so and then we might want to, I don't know, where, where's the clay brush? Well, it's been a long time since I sculpted in uh, Blender. And you might want to turn on mirroring, uh, which I can't remember how to do in Blender because, like I said, I use uh, ZBrush. But, yeah, that's what you might want to do. Okay, so you might want to inflate this up here. And... 
do some edge damages like so anyway you get the point this is what you might want to do in Blender and you're gonna to have to excuse my sculpting in Blender because I very much am usually using uh, ZBrush so um, that is there we go there's some ZBrush on the screen and in ZBrush you know you might approach this in a completely different way so you might bring it around to the front and mask off the top um, and group masks and delete hidden and then you might bring panel loops in okay to get a bowl and then you might get rid of your mask mask down the bottom actually you might divide it up a few times um, delete the lower mask up the bottom invert your mask just another quick example of how you might come to the same results um, you might inflate um, that and you might bring the gizmo and pull it down uh, get rid of your mask dynamesh it at a higher resolution and and then you might turn on like a radial symmetry and build up a fountain like so and maybe bring the radio radial count down and you can do all sorts of um, great details and ZBrush like that um, so I'm sure you can do this in Blender as well I just don't use Blender for sculpting as much as I do it for poly modeling so how might plasticity fit into the scheme of things well so we've got our fountain shape we'll get rid of our curve plasticity is really great when it comes to things like that you might want to add some details so let's just go into front mode let's get ourselves a line okay find this let's find the center point let's turn our um, grid back on and our edges okay let's actually let's get a rectangle okay and just tab it out and I'm going to turn off grid snapping um, and we just bring this up okay and then we'll just go into one we'll bevel these top two um, and then we'll extrude this out as a hard all the way around all the way across I mean okay and we'll get rid of our curve we'll fill it these two edges all right we've got a little detail there uh, we may wish to hollow this out and let's go into object mode and number four and let's do a radial, radial array which blender you can do just takes a lot more work I did it like that I can add and um, subtract um, let's let's uh, get all that together okay and now we've got all of these guys here um, we'll just go all the way around I wonder if it'll let me select next no doing something weird so we'll just select all of these quickly I shouldn't have done so many of them um, but as you can see um, it's got its place in the workflow doing the same thing in blender would take longer um, with precision um, once you've modeled something like this in plasticity you may wish to um, bring it into ZBrush to add uh, details you might be just looking for a hard surface object in the first place um, and let's have a look at something else we might be able to do quite easily in plasticity okay we've got this um, guy up the top here so we're just going to find this uh, center point uh, we'll go back into front mode 
and we'll just pull a curve around uh, like so okay and once again let's just give this a I don't know a pipe actually a two pipe don't know why that doesn't want to pop oh there we go it's because I've got this massive and once again circular array bring it down to like five maybe and I don't know these could be water spouts or whatever um, once again very very quick and easy for doing this um, kind of uh, detailing this repetitive detailing so yeah that's about it um, uh, we'll you know um, ZBrush has got its more for uh, organic um, kinds of things uh, plasticity has got its place um, blender has also uh, got its place um, especially in terms of poly modeling and another thing is is um, a lot of um, a lot of you will be wanting to use blender or zbrush for retopologizing your assets especially if you're doing uh, game design stuff so um, uh, that's the video just thought I'd uh, explain why you might want something like plasticity or something like zbrush as part of your workflow as much as a free software blender is great it's amazing it does so many things it's got geometry nodes uh, it's got rendering with um, cycles EV and even the um, the, the workbench editor uh, it's got great uh, out-of-the-box UV editing um, and then also great um, uh, UV tools like UV Packmaster and UV toolkit which I noticed is not on sale anymore for some uh, no idea why but if you can get a hold of it it's great um, and yeah Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe if that's what you want to do. I'm Peter at Take Refuge TV and have a great uh, time. Hopefully I'll do another video uh, shortly.